Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday, July 24th. And over here in the Atlantic, really quickly, east of Bermuda, we have a little bit of a system under the edge of an upper low here that the NHC is now watching, Invest 99L. This has a very slight chance of uh, trying to develop into a little something as it moves off to the north here over the next couple of days. Doesn't seem very likely to affect any land areas uh, anytime soon. Uh, but you can see the thunderstorms just boiling in this area of the Central Atlantic. And this looks like the Western Pacific out here. Uh, and this is because the water temperatures are two to three degrees Celsius above normal in spots uh, because of the reversing Atlantic tripole to a more negative state during the uh, last couple of weeks, which has been putting a lot of warm water out here in the mid-latitude Atlantic. And so uh, just boiling away in here. But the main story uh, will be Tropical Storm Dorian, which is over here now, west of the Cape Verde Islands. And this um, has been doing rather well uh, compared to how it looked yesterday. It has a very well-defined circulation still with it, and it's continuing to fire convection, not the deepest thunderstorms in the world. But the amazing thing is that it's transversing the coldest water of its journey here west of the Cape Verde Islands, about 25 degrees Celsius. It's moving over the coldest water of its journey right now. And as soon as tomorrow, it's going to start encountering progressively warmer water in here. And uh, this is going to uh, now survive this trek. Yesterday, there was still some skepticism as well from me about whether the system would even be, be able to survive this. And a lot of models had it dissipating into an open wave as it came this way and becoming so weak that even after getting over into the warmer water west of 50 West, they did not develop it again. Uh, it looks to me now today, after watching the storm, that it is a very well-defined entity that should have no problem remaining a tropical storm as it moves across the Central Atlantic. And you can see that it's really in a pretty nice environment, except for the cold water, because notice the trade wind belt is up here. But then look south of the trade wind belt. See how light the winds are in here. This is a great genesis ground where vorticity is naturally increased in here. We get counterclockwise flow with the monsoonal flow out of the southwest, trade winds to the north. This is what happens when you get a trade wind belt that is farther north than normal up here. And this is what can really get Cape Verde seasons going. And the fact that we've had Chantal and now Dorian developing this area indicates how this area uh, will probably favor more Cape Verde storms like this one as the season goes on. But regardless, we have a nice moist monsoonal flow wrapping into the system here. And so despite the dry air to the northwest, this uh, is really doing pretty well, especially against the cold water. So I think this will survive as it comes westward, which means it could have an opportunity to become stronger uh, than it is right now. Right now it's at 50 mile per hour winds, could get stronger than that later. And we'll talk about that. But the models are really disagreeing on what's going to become of this. This is the European out at day uh, seven. You can see it's an open wave over the Bahamas. You have the UK Met out at day six, open wave over the Bahamas. And then you go to the GFS and it has a hurricane north of Puerto Rico in seven days. And uh, this is obviously a very big disagreement. The GFS has just recently started developing this more aggressively. And it's seeing the warmer water out ahead of it. But there are more obstacles besides the warmer water. Once it gets towards the islands here, you can see what the GFS has. Uh, the bomb of color is our Dorian. And to notice the upper level high above it. This is the 200 millibar winds here. It's getting sheared from the south here because there's an upper level trough to the northwest. And the models do forecast this feature being here. So some shear may be a problem as uh, Dorian passes 60 west and gets towards the northern Caribbean islands or just north of them. But if Dorian is strengthening the way the GFS shows, it could bust through this trough and get into this area north of the Bahamas where it could strengthen even more. Uh, so shear may not be uh, an, a career ending problem for Dorian, uh, but it will likely moderate its intensity in this area. And then, of course, now that the GFS is showing the strengthening, we have to talk about what kind of pattern could possibly be waiting for a Dorian that could be strengthening in the southwestern Atlantic, potentially. And uh, this is this is a long way out. This is a week out on the GFS, but I want to point out how zonal the flow is in the mid-latitudes. This is the jet stream. We had a big trough forecasted by the models during this time frame a few days ago. This is flattening out because of the pattern that has the North Atlantic ridging being strong as it has been all through June and July. So now we see the trough is weaker. So now we have a zonal jet up here. What this means is that the pattern is not clear cut. If we had a strong trough digging into the eastern seaboard, this would be a guaranteed recurve, likely east of the United States. But as it stands, all it would take is an error in the models in the position of one of these short waves. And this could come either into the United States or it could recurve out to sea. 
and all you have to do is get one of those short waves to dig in like one of these on the UK Met here at day six showing a short wave into the lakes would get the ridge to uh, flex westward just long enough to get the storm to come up into the Carolinas kind of like Floyd in 99 that kind of a track coming north into the eastern seaboard or this thing could just go right out to sea. It will depend on the timing of the short waves and the timing of Dorian uh, because uh, here's the European at day seven in the Bahamas but the GFS is all the way back near Puerto Rico at day seven. Why is that discrepancy there? It's because the models show the storm being at different intensities. The weaker storm on the European is going to move faster in the low level flow. The stronger storm on the GFS is going to move slower. So you can see the big difference at day seven just between the GFS and the Euro, our, our two best models. So it's really uh, not possible to talk about exactly what might happen in this area of the world and we have to know how strong Dorian's going to be once he gets over the warmer water in here and we have to know how these little short waves that are hard to forecast are going to evolve over the eastern United States so there's a lot of things that can happen down the road not a big worry at all for the folks in here yet we're still talking about a week to ten days in advance um, really the only people that have to worry right now are the northern islands that could potentially get clipped by Dorian but it looks like the storm will likely try to pass just a little bit to the north of them. So overall my thoughts uh, this evening we have Dorian up to 50 miles per hour now so he's a little bit more organized uh, than originally thought and he's getting through the colder water right now which means as he moves west northwest uh, over the next few days uh, I think he will strengthen a little bit here you can see me slowly upping the intensity as he comes west. Wind shear in here will likely moderate the intensity in this area. Uh, so by the time it makes it towards the Lesser Antilles Islands, we could be talking about a moderate to strong tropical storm uh, that could be capable of clipping some of these northern islands with some nasty conditions. But again, some uncertainty out at day five here, still several days from the islands. Long way to go with this storm. Many things will probably change in the forecast as we go forward here. Uh, so for now, just tracking um, a nice healthy looking uh, small tropical storm that is still fragile here and uh, could still weaken some as it comes westward but I think is more likely tonight to hold together as it comes west than I did think yesterday so this is what this will be something to potentially watch down the road in the southwestern Atlantic but for now is not an imminent threat just something to track all right that's it for today thanks for watching